There is a world as tangible as our own, impossible to see yet unavoidable to sense. A world enveloped by a seemingly unending ocean of forests. Buried deep in that forest, tucked away neatly within a blanket of twilight, lies a quaint little cabin. And in that cabin is a bunch of guys who's a bunch of bullshit. Welcome to the Sleepy Cast Game Design Spectacular. I'm Jeff. Hey, Corey, what's your name? Corey, <laughs> what's your name, Jeff? <laughs> we have Chris. Hey, I'm just sitting here. I'm not a game designer. Tom Fulp. Hey, game guys. Game designer and new grand founder extraordinaire. And brand know. new to the podcast, Michael... Big Ugly Swain. 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 It's the Swain. The Swain. Yeah, the hello. creator of Blockhead 2. <laughs> Blockhead 2. <laughs> 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 I, have a, I have a question. Did you do Blockhead's voice? Yes, I did. Can you still do Blockhead's voice? Kind of, yeah. I cheated. I pitch bent it like one step up. Oh, you are a faggot. You one cheated? Step, you one step. Sick yeah, bastard. but you could. It's it's not hard. You're you not pure? Pure. <laughs> no, I'm not a I'm not a purist. Can we hear I'm, it? I'm a can vocal we hear manipulator. Hi. Hello. Wow. Hey. Whoa. So yeah, I don't it's need like the it. The real Blockhead is right here. Uh, originally, when I did that, I I always envisioned him having the voice of a child, not like this weird, messed up, like adult trying to do a high pitched voice thing. But I think it added kind of to the creepy factor, so I was okay with that. <laughs> I always thought like he was on the verge of schizophrenia because his like. Oh yeah, he is. Breaking. That's that's one hundred percent correct. Yeah. Really. The idea is his house is really an asylum. His the conscience is his medication. Oh really? And yeah, it's one of those behind the scenes. I think I, I when we were working on working on the the Ching game, whose name won't be mentioned on the podcast. I think. I explained the, uh, some of that to him once. Should we, should we cover yeah, our that side, briefly? Our yeah, side scroller called it. CCB. Talk about it. I don't even know how we hooked up to make that game in the first place now. I just finished the Mastermind World Conqueror game, which did okay. I was, I, you know, it's, I was really had a taste for game design. I wanted to jump back into it. Like, it was based on the board game Mastermind, where you get six different colored pegs, and you have to, like, create combinations of four, mm. and guess what the other guy's combo was by clues he gives you. And that was a game owned by Pressman Toys, and they didn't like that I'd made that. But they couldn't do much with it because you can't copyright game rules. You oh, can't yeah. do it. I learned this in the process of getting a cease and desist, but you you're, know, you're trolling, you haven't made it on Newgrounds until you've been sent a cease and desist. But I like the game, but you can't you can't copyright game rules, and we designed the, our own board. Uh, it didn't look in any way. The interface was nothing like their board game, so they had no case. Even though they didn't have a case, they still fuck with you. Yeah, yeah, they can. Fucking company. Yeah, yeah, you can you can freely send cease and desist letters, like, and mm. you never know how willing they are to like go through with it. Uh, we were talking about uh, your first game, CCB. Yeah, yeah. Like eventually, we're getting to CCB. It's a. Uh, it was supposed to be a satirical, not racist, but poking fun at American racism well, towards Japanese game let, shows. Let, let's start from here. Like, I think type we, of game. we wanted to make a game. I think we, but we're both infatuated with the show Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Ninja Ninja Warrior with um, most extreme challenge, Look, really? also, I think, right? MXC is like Trump's Ninja Warrior. In my opinion, Ninja it's, Warrior was well, so there's like, more laugh factor. Like it's hilarious. Right. Ninja Warrior is where you you go for that like feel good like yeah like the every man did it or that like that small girl that did it for the American I was one not like, that long they ago. They get to the wall and they just, and they just like fall on their face and that'd be it. Yeah, Ninja yeah. Warrior they have this like, like build up to like these what, like Takeshi's Castle. We wanted to make yeah, a game with yeah. like a clumsy dumb American. Yeah, we wanted to mash it really hard. Also, of course, it's a really good idea. So so why did you decide to let's just let's just let's just cut it. We called it. Ching Chong Beautiful. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm so like sorry, Tom. Hear that correctly. We should have listened. Yeah, Tom. Tom. I, only me is embarrassed. Tom. But. Tom yeah, it, it, to, to Tom's like uh, credit, he's like, you know what, guys? <laughs> I think I think we're so, I think we're I think we just sabotage ourselves like somehow. Little subtle things now, that, that are outright, which fine, that's fine. Like subtle. We had dialogue. There were uh -huh. lines about zipper heads. I, then, that's where I then got I, then I Then I made a stage. I think we cut that one. I made we? a crater stage where Nagasaki that's was. Oh, that's, that was on. Uh -oh. Yeah, there's a crater stage. Uh, th there's a big like desert based out of a nuclear crater. Yeah. Which, if you look on the map of Japan where the stage is, it's it's in Hiroshima. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's I mean that's tasteless. That's I, not no, evil. Remember, it's just tasteless. I remember getting super invested in Ching Chong. I wanted to fucking beat it. Yeah. That was so got, hard at first. I got, yeah, it was. Yeah. You it like was master terrible. the controls eventually, and then you actually like, oh wait, I'm not actually playing the game. And then you realize you have to collect like the fucking like fish books or something, and then you're just like, yeah. Once you once you get through easy mode, awesome. yeah, <laughs> and, the, and the game just cuts off. It's like. Sorry, you want. Was, <laughs> it blows my mind. This game is not for babies. It blows my mind, Tom. You're like, it just makes you go back to the beginning. These, these games, the games you release and stuff, like when Alien Hominide came out, Hominid, hom Hominid. Homicide, mm -hmm. Alien, Alien 
really know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's like that game came out. It just kicked my fucking ass. I didn't uh-huh. know what to do. I was like, it reminded me the, of Contra. Maybe yeah. Very the mad. first time I played it, I was just like, I can, this is this will be fun. I just yeah. got mulled down by yeah. Like, it's a, the game is a death security, side at the time, and I was just it? like, oh fuck. Like even that fucking robot game, Cathode Robots. Or Wait, okay. Robot, robot. robot. You get, you be, yeah, you get people coming in and they just make like the hardest shit ever. You're just like, oh my god, I want to rip my fucking Wait, head off. These are all games that you all made this. here, right? Yeah, so far. So yeah. Wait, Robot was. Uh, these beautiful guys. was like your second coding. Um, that it? yeah, I think okay. So right, this I had swapped African <laughs> Mastermind World Conquer. That was my first time making a game. I never programmed in Flash before outside of like uh, preloaders. That so was it. yeah, so when you made uh, <clears throat> and menus when you made World Conquer and you released it. How many like bugs were there in there? Oh, plenty, all the time. Like uh, one of the uh, big game-breaking ones was that sometimes enemies would just run off the map <laughs> and just keep going forever. Nowadays, I could fix this in a second, but it was hard to test because you're working in Flash. That's just that's the nature of the beast. Yeah. And uh, like it, the game-breaking bug was like they would just run off, and so you're always under attack, is what your thing says. Yeah. You can continue to play, but your game never auto saves. So you're basically stuck there until you buy another base and like evacuate this one, but yeah. then you lose the base forever. You know what you said? Uh, they ran off the screen. Uh-huh. Did you ever see uh, the Lord of the Rings two uh, DVD commentary for the movies? Yeah, yeah, I watched all those on a, a the, lonely day in college. Do you remember once. the part where uh, they're like, we, "We we made these like army simulators, and then oh, we yeah. and then we noticed that some of the orcs were deserting their battlefield and they were running into the forest." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, right. Like when you uh, when you see the battle of uh, of Mordor, yeah. like when they're like doing the flashbacks to. But they, the they thought they had created and, like artificial intelligent fear. Right. What they what, what they had done was badly programmed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> A really crappy uh, AI simulation. In the DVD commentary, they're saying it though, like uh, like they created like real life like Cause, little orcs. Because to be fear. fair, you can't animate like hundreds of thousands of guys all fighting at the same time. Yeah. It's an amazing feat that they did this. Yeah. But then they're marveling at the the birth of their new creation, <laughs> which is not a, a movie about a guy that would be rolling over in his grave right now. Yeah, I just forgot. Uh, about and it. his and his book creation, but, but no, instead they've created they've given birth to, to new life. Yeah. No, those you guys know, are idiots. To back up a second, I think that there was a lot of great stuff in that game. The the thing that which sucked one? the most. Ching was, Chong, yeah, yeah. The thing yeah. that sucked the most was. Was we made it on like fairly, you know, average good speed running computers, and then yeah. but it just ran slow for a lot of people. I remember I couldn't even export the game at the end. I could test it, but every time I went to go export it, the game would break for me. Like it would fail exporting. So, yeah. so we had you doing it on your Mac. My PC was just failing at this. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. running the game in general also. I just remember was, exporting was files in Flash was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tom, I think that was like the main reason everyone wanted to YouTube was yeah. the, was like uh, to upload a cartoon to Newgrounds. You had to make a cartoon in such a way that you know that after fr- I think it was fourteen thousand frames, uh-huh. uh, it, it starts it to crash right? or something. Yeah. But you also had to code in that ad API, which was a piece of shit, uh-huh. and the preloaders were a piece of shit. And if you wanted it to like stop after the cartoon, you'd have to like go into the file thing and click and add know, the stop. stop action. Yeah, and, and no, nobody knew how to do any of that. So everyone was really intimidated. That's why, like, so when something <laughs> came, oh my god, dude, or no, not something. Swivel but the one is I a had... fucking godsend. Yeah, swivel. Oh, yeah. This is that's what I meant to say. Swivel. Yeah, Mike's thing, right? Swivel, swivel is a godsend. It's, it's a flash converter, and it's so handy. It is so handy. The other thing too, I thought Tom's his all-in-one preloader was like magic to oh, me. Oh god, yeah. I used to always like. Oh, yeah. Steal the new grounds like the free download. Yeah. Oh yeah, my oh, I, used to, I used to put code like at the beginning, and the end, and it was terrible. I, I yeah, took that. The, I dissected that for all yeah, my pocket no, cartoons. My preloaders flashes, were all just a modified version. The of The porn your... flashes on Shad's site that uh-huh. had the loader. It's a new grounds preloader. <laughs> I just fucking changed the pictures yeah. around and just no. Yeah, get, <laughs> creating a free preloader was like a really oh, smart shit. move because oh, so yeah. much flash had our preloader on it, and you'd see. Uh, other websites would come along and they'd have that play button. Like yeah. they'd strip out all of our logos and stuff, but they'd always still have that play button. Like they yeah. didn't know how to like that had to be like the way a web animation started. I think I probably saw them, like it's so universal. Like when you go to like sites and just like free games, you're like, this is Newgrounds preloader. So you know immediately that it's like these people just stole assets from games and just like use the preloader because it's there. Mm-hmm. And it's like you had different versions. You had Christmas versions. You also had one that just like automatically plays, which a lot of like spam people use. Uh-huh. Me included. Uh, you like you wait for it to load, and then suddenly just your speakers explode because there's just static and noise <laughs> immediately after. And I don't think I ever made my own pre because I tried following tutorials and stuff. Because I used to go to Newgrounds for like, oh, I want to make a game. I'll just use Newgrounds tutorials. It'll teach me how to do like basic coding. Pull my hair out that shit. But then these people, they're like, they're wrong. And people in the comments are like, your tutorial didn't help me. You got the, all your stuff wrong. And they were just like, fuck you in the comments. <laughs> 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 there's nothing ever changed. So it was always like something. 
thing in the back of my mind, but... When you guys started designing your games, what was the first problems you ran into that you never yeah, thought of? What about the details of, like, the running and stuff? How did that come along? Because there are so many bits of details, like, running on water causes you to start slipping and sliding, so you have to, like... Oh, and in like, yeah. yeah. First, I guess, to fire off the answer to Chris's thing, um, I, I know that one of the biggest problems, easy to just, like, turn Flash into a punching bag, uh, it's, it's really, really easy to do that. But, yeah, not knowing that the further you go into a game and you can't back off, like, you're not having a problem with the game, you're having a problem with the Flash cannot handle something of that size. Yeah, right. I had that problem with Project Nexus 1. Ching Chong Beautiful was no different. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we stopped the game right where we did with the content we had. Mm. Fine for a Flash game, didn't need any more stages. And we, we could have been really unlucky if there was, like, one more stage we were trying to shove in there. Mm. Uh, and if Flash had just said, no, it's just not going to happen. We're not going to export it. Um, your assets are going to get swapped around and messed up. And hopefully happen, we'll talk about that later. That, like, happened with Final Fantasy VII, where yeah. they, they got to a point where they're like, this is so buggy, we're just going to release it the way it is, because if we add anything else, it's yeah. going to, like, break it more. And that's it's mystifying that that's the, that, that would be how that works. Yeah. You, you think that you write the code, and that the more code you write, it's not that one new piece of code is screwing something else up. That happens all the time. It's that... The, the engine or, or platform that you're using just can't handle it and then things start to break apart for entirely different reasons. Yeah, certain memory loads weird because even yeah. in like levels it's like what is like destroying the game and you find out it's just like one movie clip that has a little too much frames in just that one area and I never understood how to do scenes in Flash and how to like put all that shit together. It's it also was... scary when you're all working with different computers. Oh, yeah. So Jeff will draw something in CS3 on a Mac and then hand it to me and I'll <laughs> open it in CS5.5 on a PC and I have no <laughs> idea like what weird shit is breaking in that exactly, file. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I'm still like, using like, and he, he, which is weird too because you use a Mac and I still use a Windows. So when you, we can somehow in some weird circular swap between a Mac to a Windows to a Mac to a Windows. And it's like weird because Flash like kind of like stopped making stuff after kind of like prior to that. Like Flash 8 is for CS3 and then CS4 is CS3. Then CS6 is like CS4 and 5 or whatever, and it just sort of like does that. <laughs> the down saving? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to swap between. That is like, the biggest. You have to leapfrog from to episode to know, episode of this stupid program. It is the for worst. For people who don't know what that is, if you've got Flash uh, 4, you can't open Flash 5 files, so you gotta go into Flash 5 on someone's computer and down save it to a CS4 format. <laughs> exactly. But the big problem is if you have CS3, oh, I need oh, yeah. to also own CS4. I need to save a CS5 to CS4, exactly. then open CS4 <laughs> and save it down to CS3. And so it, you have yeah, to own everything. Every, yes, you, you have to own every copy of Flash And you have Flash to that own it because it. they even made it now, so the fucking publish settings won't even open if you don't own it. So you actually physically have to own CS4 in order to downgrade it from CS4 to CS3 to give it to somebody to downgrade that or upgrade that. You know, I think CS4. they finally fixed that. I, I hope th so. I think in CS5.5 5 and 6, it, it says, the, like... You're opening a file that's different, I think so. for later versions they did yeah. try to fix that, but... To me, Flash was always, like, it's a, it was just, like, MS Paint, but with tools you can use that make pictures move and stuff. Like, yeah, MS yeah, Paint wrong. with a picture, because it's very basic. And we could start, like, talking about, like, the visuals, like, problems. Yeah, because I'm, I'm working in 3D. Chris has got some opinions on 3D, too. He's been... Thing, things like, okay. Been working on Blender. Start, when you start making the game, you notice <laughs> the, the more the more detailed your character is, the more you really feel like you can't get away with. Mm -hmm. For example, if there's, like, an idle animation, and the character's standing there, and a run, it looks weird. Like, you can't, you can't get away with what you, people used to get away with on an 8-bit Nintendo games, where, you know, there was, like, stand, run, jump. Now we have to, like, make little transitions between every Oh, yeah, movie. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, like, tiny transitions, like a one-frame fucking transition, yeah. but it somehow all comes together in the end, and it's just like, how the fuck does this work? But then you just, like, I'm just gonna mimic this, just like and, I used to do in the past, and mm -hmm. this is, it's gonna be perfect. I mean, and it's Ching like, Chong Beautiful had the same thing. Like, we swaying through in all these transitions. We had so many frames of animation. We, yeah, we, well, first you, you kind of decide what good, is the though. character gonna do, and there were no transitions in the beginning. The very first copy of the game, I know it's floating out there somewhere, I think it's in my drop box, yeah. is this stick figure with the basic engine of the character. Hmm. I basically did all the like physics stuff in like two days, maybe a day. Yeah. And it was broken as hell and I, I tweaked it over time to get more contact points so the game would know if you got hit in the midsection or the feet or the head. Oh, There's cool. different animations. That's kind of like, for instance, when a character gets knocked down, depending if he gets knocked down forward, he falls mm -hmm. on his stomach. But yeah. if he gets knocked back, he falls on his back. Right, So yeah. it's context sensitive also to the movements. And that's really fucking cool because yeah. people don't usually pay it. It's like, it's not to talk down upon in like these indie sprites 
fights games, but they usually like have like a, if it's very simplistic, it's just like a one frame thing. It's like hurt, fall, down, up. And yeah. it's like six frames and, you know, things like Terraria, which is just like the characters move and it's just like this like skeleton that has this all connected to one part. So you could essentially like swap things out. These fucking characters, everything is hand drawn. It's one of the other challenges of all this too, is you get the better your animation is, you start getting into the Prince of Persia territory, which I always hated. It was so much about looking at all this beautiful animation that it took away your control over the character. Like, mm -hmm. to me, it always felt like that. It didn't feel like oh, twitchy. You, you mean the first enough. Prince of Persia? <clears throat> yeah. The, the Santa time and, one? Um, no, no, no. No, no, the like the old, old computer restarted Prince of Persia. Yeah, like, the, animation, yeah. the animation was beautiful, but yeah. he, you, you could oh, yeah, barely if you, interrupt if you, him. If you, like, took the effort to stop for a moment and decide you wanted to move again, yeah. I, I hope you weren't going to be doing anything for the next couple minutes of <laughs> yeah. your life, because well, yeah. you're I dedicating it to the cool Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that. Like, if I animate a character, if I want to make a character jump, initially I would, like, make him crouch down, like, Mm -hmm. you normally would see in an animation and they like spring up and jump yeah, like, yeah. but then like it they doesn't really work in a game right. you have to dissect it yeah, yeah, when you're, about, to when you're about to get hit by a bullet you don't want to see your guy you don't crouch want, yeah. before he jumps you want him off the ground as soon as possible there's yeah. there's that game that Paul Robertson art where they did that where the to no fault of his own he animated the character crouching down and jumping but they left that in the game so it always feels like there's this Annoying delay in so the gameplay. It'd be like Mario pausing for like a second before yeah. he jumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right, it's because honestly, he's got to coil his legs up and Kingdom then did throw that. his momentum. I don't mean to like. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts did do that. I don't want to rag on Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is so fucking. But every single fucking time Sora's clunky ass jumped, he had to pause <laughs> and then jump into the air like an asshole. So when he you lands, could he not also avoid anything. When he lands, he takes yeah, like he a few also seconds. had to have an animation of him recovering from yeah. his landing. And that's a tough thing too, because sometimes you could say it's a part of the game. Like they learn these mechanics they adapt around it yeah so there could be like a positive argument for some of it but i i prefer feeling as much control as yeah. possible when you jump times. you want to jump immediately you want that evasion you don't want to have to know okay yeah. see that's the thing right jump. have you played uh, abe's odyssey or heart of darkness it's like the same thing that's but, what i was about to say heart of darkness it feels good in those though but have you played uh gta 4 or 5 Every time you're like turning around, like your character like stops and like skids on the ground and then takes like a few seconds to start running back and it yeah. always felt weird. Or if you're on like the side of a building in GTA 4 looking down, if you push up on the controller, he'll like, he, he won't just like edge forward like in an old game. He'll like take a full step forward and he'll fall off every uh -huh. single time. Yeah, or if you're, if you're like on the edge of a building and yeah. you like, you're going forward and you decide I want to jam the controller back so yeah. now he walks towards me. So now he'll like, you don't know, big... is he going to turn left yeah. and fall off the building? Is he going to turn right yeah. and go wide? Yeah, because in Vice City it was coded like simply so like you tap W and he'll just take a really quick step forward and stop instantly. Yeah. And then these yeah. games they're like, we, we want to make him animated more so they'll right. like take a full fucking walk around every time you try and just edge Here's, backwards. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed on a PS3 controller because I think I've had it happen on multiple controllers the analog stick has like a spring back where it will actually, like if you're holding right and you release it, it oh, springs back so far that your yeah. character points left. What, really? So like when I play Rogue Legacy now, I play it with like the plus pad hmm. because I keep ending up in these situations where I'm facing the opposite way of an enemy, but I know it happened to me in Castle 2 on PS3 and I think I've had it happen like on multiple really? PS3s with multiple controllers. That's weird. Interesting. Like it's now it's like sensitive to the point where no matter where like you actually move back. Yeah, and part stuff. of that could be in the game code of because you can check the sensitivity of the controller. So we sort of have a variable that we set for our sensitivity level. So it's not like there's only so much of that threshold where you yeah, start to move the, the it's, stick. It, it where feels it feels like that the controller is still sending too much info. I always hated that too. Like where you're like moving and then suddenly you stop and then there's like that wait period. And I also know what you're talking too, where it's like that 3D space where they have to like almost take a whole other walk around so if you had to turn on an edge you were already going off the it's like edge. I've never gotten used to it I've been like playing GTA 4 since it came out and every time I'll, I'll push back on the control he'll like you this know is, walk around circle and yeah. always fall off Grand Theft Auto 3 it's like you, those games you like you're running like an asshole but you turned on a dime like you it's the just same with going. Red Dead Redemption yeah. it's like uh, <laughs> they're just super animated so they'll always be running all over the place yeah, yeah. where you're trying to do a simple action yeah just like you guys uh, you're talking that uh, you've designed an idle animation that's great so now the run animation has to be great and the transitions need to be great mm -hmm. so that's what they did when GTA 4 transitioned out of 3 mm. and 5 did the same exact thing they've set the standard for everything looking good it's a, it's like not just a game but a yeah. simulation yeah. they're putting you into that with this character they're also simulating the realism of a character how he would walk right yeah. which unfortunately you're not him you only have a controller for the wide range of motions that a human being can do in that yeah, scenario exactly. and that level of complication uh, they, they've stuck to it they can't make it simple and what's also important is um, not to be 
too overly animated. Like you can be animated, but not to a point where you just have so much exaggeration in movements because you're going to be seeing that a lot. And that's going to become very obnoxious when you're in like uh, the heat of the moment and you have this like asshole like really flowing around and really getting into it. You're just <laughs> like, I didn't want this. And now it's like I'm dying because I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. It's weird because it's kind of like a weird puzzle how like Jeff, you and Tom like fucking somehow make these things work where it's like a prior animation fits perfectly with another animation but since it's going so fast it like tricks the eyes and you just sort of assume that it goes in clean but if you actually broke it down frame by frame you would see that it's like a different animation this is an interesting topic in like fighting games the combat like in castle crashers when you're tapping your attack button yeah when you finish a move there's like a little window where if you hit the button again it will continue the combo yeah and something in the game we're working on now it sort of expanded on that and have it uh Let's say before the animation's finished of the move, if within a few frames you've hit the button for the next move, it'll like log that and then run it when that move's done. So exactly. it's sort of like a little yeah. bit of before and after. And I, I, I wasn't sure if there's buffer. an official term. Someone told me it's called buffering. Yeah, but yes, yeah. yeah. People get mad with that in Dark Souls where you'll do it at like a You over buffer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. something too. Because some games, I think maybe in Dynasty Warriors, like if I just mash the button four times fast, then you can just sit back and watch them do yeah. this long four hit combo. And what we did, it's a smaller window than that so you can't queue up four attacks at once like at best you could just get the next I think Tekken does that or did that like you have to have already input uh, most of the commands for the mm -hmm. attack you're about to like sequence yeah. I always um, liked how Tekken's fighting system was I was a big fan of how Tekken was Tekken. like you could you really? could punch in most of the commands was, at the beginning and just watch your guy finish his combo it, there was, it was still timing but I guess no, it might it have been the characters you play as like you play as the um law yeah law I think it was law law was was like the Bruce Lee guy <laughs> right yeah law slash uh, law Fei had Long really slash... cool like uh, he had really cool like time and hits and stuff. I can't get into fighting games. Things. I just can't do it. Dude, I played Tekken fucking... I, uh, like, I was like 13, 14. One thing I will say though is that like ever since I was younger, I thought Tekken was really boring and it had no charm and even though I don't like fighting games, I still think Street Fighter has the most charm out of Street all. Street Fighter games. is insane, dude. That game is fucking nuts. Insane. <laughs> it's insane. It's like yeah. fucking... The, just like... And this is coming from somebody who's completely ignorant. I didn't understand yeah. Evo. I thought Evo was just a bunch of rowdy people throwing <laughs> fucking TVs and punching each other. I thought it was like a mosh pit. I was just like, why do these assholes get so excited over fucking fighting games? And then I sat down and watched it, and I was legitimately enthralled. I was like, these motherfuckers are like insane. They're like com human computers that can just read people, and it's what? nuts. Yeah, once you understand the mechanics of the game, you realize these guys are making decisions on like one sixtieth of a second. It's insane. Yeah. And there's so, there's so many things that are so, done that are so smart, <laughs> and nobody really even appreciates it, because they don't really understand what they're even saying. Exactly. That's with so. TVs too. Uh, like, I guess the best TV, the input lag on a TV is something like 18 milliseconds. Is oh. like the best you can do. Fighting game players, if are you don't use a computer, the you biggest, have to use a gaming computer monitor. The biggest hipsters in it. Not even hipsters. It, they they want the least lag humanly possible. They you use know? like old TVs, right? They will buy. They, yeah, Afro did this with his uh, they, first they, Smash Brothers. They just to practice these, for tournament level. These make these special TVs. They only sold the airports or something. <laughs> They're these super special low lag TVs. They have like no controls on them. They're like bare minimum. And mm -hmm. fighting game players would like special order these stupid things. Cause it's like the least anyway. <laughs> Wait, that that's something that really annoys me about Uncharted. Uh, Uncharted has like lag like built into into the controls anyways. Mm. So like Uncharted three, I couldn't play because my TV had lag, and Uncharted had lag, so it was unplayable. What is the purpose of the lag? Is it like contextual so that your no, moves are interpreted? It, it, there, there's no purpose. It's uh, there it's was, just a fuck up. It's do you like, remember? Um, had you ever played a uh, Donkey Kong sixty four? No. They yeah. actually compensated with the lag and I think Rare thought of this in the future like when things lagged they made your character move faster huh. so when environments were lagging you moving faster made you think oh it's completely normal like I'm just moving fast and you can like see the difference where if you like had a character who long jumped if you made a ton of lag and then long jumped you would go like a hundred feet forward and <laughs> I don't think they realized that people would shoot like a hundred oranges that would explode <laughs> and then you just long jump afterwards and fucking <laughs> launch across the screen and yeah. hit walls and but it is like something that's like kind of really smart because it's like if you were if you were actually playing Donkey Kong, there was that game was fucking filled to the brim with shit that lagged. It's like, different from input lag. It, no, it, it's it was kind of the same thing because there was also like a delay with the lag because since there was like no memory on the yeah. N64, it was so minimal. There was input lag and actual. Well, frame yeah, because it was lag. it was there to render like base level objects yeah. uh, to make everything look like a like a weird polygon yeah. world that you're in. Yeah. And then Donkey Kong was just a bunch of like pre-rendered stuff, wasn't it? It was yeah, all so like, they had like to, highly like, detailed images for and, that and stuff. He's yeah. talking about 64. 
was that? 64, right? Yeah. yeah Something 64. that might have been related to that is they're trying to make the game look like you're moving just as quickly, even though the frame rate has been reduced. Yeah, I think it's And something, something, something that they were probably doing wrong, and I, I can't explain the math behind this. Mike Mike can explain it. I've been talking to him about this, by the so way. So if, you, if you have a game that runs at 30 frames per second, yeah. and when you press jump, let's say you put a negative 20 as your speed, and your gravity is 1, and that makes your character go up like negative 20, negative 19, negative 18, and eventually they hit 0, and then they become positive 1, 2, 3, and they fall back down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're doing that at 30 frames per second, and then you change your game to 60, you think you can just cut all those values in half, mm -hmm. and you'll get the same result, just smoother. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'll, it'll be negative 10 and half 0.5 gravity, and he'll he'll move up to the same amount and fall. But it's different, though. Like, it changes. Really? Yeah, Why even though happen? twice the frame rate <clears throat> and half the values does not work. They ran in, like, sometimes, I mean, 30, obviously, is the highest they could go, but sometimes it went to, like, 12 or, like, 15. Well, have, have any of you guys played Fallout 4 yet? Because I had this conversation no. with Mike. I don't uh, know if he sent yet. you the video. Mm -mm. He sent this to me. He's like, here you go, Swain. Don't worry. This happens to everybody. Uh, and he shows me that Bethesda really screwed up with Fallout, where the game speed is tied to your frame rate, which is, is it's insane. If your game is running at like like 120 or something insane like that, you're zipping around. You what? drop stuff, it falls. Yeah, it's crazy. Animation speeds, movement speeds, and physics speed. I think uh, I read the same thing with the deal with the new Halo. The physics are tied to the frame rate. It's 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 a screw up. It's it's the difference between. Um, I haven't seen that happen since like. But Windows they've been 98. using the same game engine for it, like 20 years. They have, they yeah. Really upgraded right. This, the only time I've ever seen that happen was with the Simpsons cartoon studio. Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> that. The, the game studio. we're working on right now has a lot of lip syncing in it. So I generate data on the lip syncing, and right now that data is basically ticks on a timer where it's like the mouth will be here one second in, two seconds in, mm. but it's all just ticks of frames. And because it's ticks of frames, if you have slowdown, like let's say the game doesn't have any slowdown in local play, but in online play it starts to slow down or something, then the lip syncing wouldn't keep up with the voice. So I need to change it to actually look at your clock. Like, mm -hmm. instead of looking oh, at the ticks, okay. it has to, like, look at the clock and be like, oh, a second has passed. Oh, wow. And regardless of how many ticks, whether it's gotten 60 ticks or 30 ticks. Yeah. That was an issue I had when I was, like, fucking around with game audio and stuff. Because I was always trying to learn the difference between streaming audio, having an audio in a movie clip, and just trying to understand the difference. And I was just, like, obviously streaming audio is what I was so used to. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to try and make a game with streaming audio. It's yeah. easy. I'll just put a game with 150 frames and then I'll put the fucking audio that just ends up looping <laughs> infinitely Yeah, because you run into yeah. all these like sound yeah, it skips errors. frames, yeah, like Flash will skip frames in order to make the animation keep up. Like that's good for lip syncing in Flash, you set it to stream and your animation will skip frames if it has to in order to keep up with the audio track. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's I think the unique thing about what we're, even though it's not new or unique really, but we have characters built out of multiple pieces so the head is yeah. always separate, so the head can just do whatever it wants at any point. It can talk, it can, eyes can look around. Yeah, the main idol head is actually very animated. One way I always like to look at these games is uh, like as a kid, I was really into video games and then Dragon's Lair came out in arcades yeah. <laughs> and everybody God, everybody would say how Dragon's Lair had the best graphics of any game and yeah. I it made me mad because I knew <laughs> they were cheating. They were just, yeah. and that was like the beginning of quick timer events, which I've, I've never liked quick timer events, but um, yeah, I didn't like it how they were like cheating because it wasn't, it, they, they, they took away so much playability. A movie and and there's like that scale where you had Dragon's Lair on one end and you had like Prince of Persia which was sort of like in the middle there and then you had like real twitch gameplay you know responsive gameplay on the on the far left of that and so I like to look at it now as like I want games to look as much as possible like if someone's watching you play a game I want it to look as much as possible like they're watching a cartoon on TV but I also yeah. want it to be like totally responsive controls that's kind of what we're aiming for yeah, yeah I want yeah, it to be yeah, like definitely. you're playing a cartoon that's but, pretty much what it's. Yeah. Well, here's a question for with. Tom, right? Like, what, like, what old school arcade game? And you're a kid. Like, what, what were you most impressed by that you're just like, like this Mortal is... Kombat for me, first time. Mortal seeing Kombat. Me. Yeah, the pre-rendered stuff. It tricked me. I thought, okay, like, yeah, this, yeah. like this is hand drawn. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that was what I was think going everybody, my everybody, mind. everybody was kind of yeah. blown away. The most impressive stuff, like 3D. I think like the real like 3D game I had at the time was like Road Rash. That Road Rash like, 3D really impressed me. Even yeah, that was that was a really good game. One of the only good 3D games. Yeah, dude, Road Rash, that game, I, I love that game. Go game. Going yeah. back to, like, arcade stuff, one of my earlier memories is Double Dragon. 
just how much oh, yeah. fun Double Dragon oh, yeah. was. Metal Slug and and, and in it's interesting because Double Dragon still did some things that like people haven't really done since, like doing like the full Nelson where enemies could have you in a full Nelson and punching and stuff like that, and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. and fighting each other at the end, which that's something that was adapted into Streets, Castle Crash. Streets of Rage too yeah. just ripped that shit off. Like, yeah. they, they just it was Streets of Rage was like this is Double Dragon for Sega. Yeah, and that's and pretty it's much still what it good. Was. It's it. really fucking good. Yeah. But, Rage. but like it's like you play it and after a while you're just like. This game's too fucking long, and <laughs> if you play it on hard, you're just like, I give up. I can't, I can't get past half this shit. Well, another game that was really cool that no one ever really saw anything else of. Do you remember Attack of the Planet of the Robot Monsters? No, or Escape no, from the Planet of the Robot Monsters? Mm -hmm. It was like this isometric game that part of what makes it stand out in my memory so much is because there never was a home version. I think there might have been a computer version. And, what, uh, what kind of game was it? It was sort of like an isometric run around and shoot at these like robots. It kind of had like I don't know like a '60s sci-fi vibe to it. Was What's it like, isometric? Like, like Smash TV like or something? Was it? A little bit like oh. that, but yeah, more cartoony. <laughs> Afterburner blew my mind. Yeah, it was scaling. It was just so fast and just uh, I don't know, just amazing. Metal Slug Three is like amazing graphics for the. Yeah, Metal Slug. I remember being at like some shitty like hotel looking place and they had it there and I just remember <laughs> spending like twenty dollars worth of quarters and just playing the fuck out of it for like four hours. What the hell was that tank game on? That was the cool thing yeah. about arcades too back then. I, I, I go on this rant sometimes about this magic oh, that's yeah. left the world <laughs> because you didn't have the internet and you, when you went to the mall, you had no idea what new game was going to be the arcade and how it was going to like completely change your perception of reality. Like one day you'd walk in the arcade and there'd be Street Fighter and people lining up to play Street Fighter. And one day you'd yeah. walk in and it'd be Virtual Fighter where it's like 3D polygons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it was always the most cutting edge stuff and you had no idea it was coming. And that, that just made it magic and that's that's. It was gone. always like little things, like if the four player X-Men arcade game, they... To make it look like an extra long monitor, they had one monitor, and oh, then there was the a monitor thing, below yeah. it that was mirrored up, which yeah. eliminated the seam between the monitors. Yeah. Really? And looked like one six player long one, yeah. six-player. It Whoa. was really cool. Wow. When you guys are programming games, what do you think? What do you think is like something that's hard to do that just is not appreciated whatsoever by people? Um, like I think one, I think one, I think was like the camera. Like I know Tom and I. Oh yeah, camera. The yeah, camera stuff the camera. is always this really complicated thing that nobody thinks about. Originally, Tom, I ran Project Nexus one by you in the beginning. You were the one who first said, okay, so when you get to the edge of a map, mm. you get to it, the camera, you know, maybe the camera should stop, and then you continue to walk, but the camera stops moving, so that you're, like, not approaching this door, and you have, like, half a screen of just black nothingness, right, of, of empty uh, negative space. Like, yeah, great, that's perfect, I love that. So I just, I typed it in, I coded it in, camera's exposition can't go past this, which is to say in Flash that you don't drag the world mm -hmm. past a certain point, like, done. So the world is moving and not a camera? Oh, yeah, there's, there's no such thing as a, well, I mean, there is a camera, you can do virtual cameras in flash so when a guy walks this way huh. what you're actually doing is moving your movie clip inside like the character inside the movie clip of the background right and then you drag the whole background to proportion so you're saying when you make a game and you're like a 2d game and you're moving the world to suit the camera that doesn't affect the memory at, like at the same way a camera would I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not but uh, yeah. as far as I know I never messed with any virtual cameras so I couldn't say as to how they were doing it right but I'm assuming it must be something that's tricking the like flash into working basically the you same want to hate in 3d games what you're talking about when the camera will like automatically pan behind the character after like a few seconds. Well, 3D is such a, a, a massive pain, because the reason I brought up the Nexus 1 example mm -hmm. is we have a very similar system in Nexus 2, where we have, it's 3D, it's full 3D, yeah. but the levels still basically go side to side, and I needed to find a way, I don't, I couldn't even tell you how I finally did it, and I'm pretty sure it's just a bunch of made up, like, nonsense, but to get that same effect in 3D where you hit the edge of a, a rail mm -hmm. that overlooks the city and you want to give them a little bit of a view yeah. if they keep going, but you don't want to just, like, cut it off, like, right there, so, like, getting those like these little markers in place that the camera understands whether or not it's it's within the view of the camera right and also being able to deal with because uh, you're no longer doing a flash game where you design the aspect ratio yeah. now you're making a game for any aspect ratio for any TV screen or monitor that plays this you got to account for that now I was running into this stupid but but totally reasonable problem where if a, somebody's playing on a like a, an ugly looking like square monitor mm. when they get to the edge of the map they're gonna like lose most of the map so now I've got to account for the aspect ratio of the viewpoint as well, I hate. <laughs> yeah. I hate the camera. Yeah. It is my worst enemy. I always enemy. thought like another thing that, in general, like how collision works. <laughs> there's a lot of factors to collision. Like when you see games where it's like you run really hard and some oh, like, clipping, right? When you yeah. like show through the wall. I, yeah, and, and we're talking like, 3D, right? Yeah, because tile, tile is hard to break. Tile is hard to break. 3D, because it's like, for instance, there's like parts where it's like layers that have to overlay, so the character has to know that the code tells them to go through it. It's really interesting to try and make things look natural or even like the water effects and stuff because I was just spending time jumping around the water. When I jumped sideways, the water actually tilted with me. In which game? 
our game. And the one you're working on. Yeah, yeah, when you the water actually like tilted, and then when I jump straight up, it, it goes straight up. Yeah, it kind and then of when follows I jump, your motion. Like really high, like delays. There's just all this like fucking different shit. And it's just like, how does it manage? Well, plus just just adding, just having some water on the ground. Yeah. It's basically like as soon as you land in that water, you have a mask over your body yeah. that's basically showing the part time. of you above the water mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, your shadow is always looking to be at your feet. But once you're in water, your shadow actually moves up to be around your body sticking out of the water. Oh, really? And that, that makes some weird things happen because I would like reference certain things based on where your shadow is too. Oh, yeah. So it's like that all gets weird when you start messing with the shadow. And then it's also when you jump, when you jump out of the water, you're no longer in the water, but it realizes your shadow's still in the water. So your shadow still appears on the top of the water instead of being on the Re platform that's under oh, the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, see, the crazy thing is, Tom, you think about that. <laughs> Most fucking people are, don't even think about that. Well, like, that's another people... one of the problems with making a game. <laughs> because the artwork is so good, the better know, the game right? looks, the more challenges you run into with things that you just can't get away with things anymore. Yeah. And there's all sorts of weird things. Like, so, so our game's... It's 2D, but it doesn't play 2.5D because it is like straight side scroller, but no. it's visually 2.5D where you see the floor that you're standing on instead of like a straight line. Yeah. And when you see a door on the wall, it's sort of like a 3D perspective that you walk through. Exactly. So like when you walk through that doorway, there has to be a layer of artwork that's in front of the player. Exactly. And but, the layer that's behind, right? Yeah, and the layer that's yeah. behind. But where it gets weird is like, where oh, does yeah. that layer end? You, exactly. have, you have to decide where that cutoff is because that's where you kind of get the clipping effect where like you can swing your weapon and it can vanish behind some art mm. above the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. somewhere it has to end. And there's like yeah. the background like parallax scrolling. Like that's also like like you introduce that mechanic where now you can actually like go into the background, mm -hmm. into the layer of the scrolling like background. So now you have two sections and you also have to like if you're punching and fighting enemies back there. Yeah. It's just like it's I don't I don't envy you guys dealing shit. with depth like yeah. in two D. I don't miss that. Like working in three D it's pretty easy. The shader dictates it and it's done. That pixel's in front of another one, let's move on. Yeah. In, in 2D, man, that was a nightmare. <laughs> Anytime like, I do a background, so I, have to just, I have to yeah, think about it in like layers and how these yeah. layers are moving with each other. And, and I don't and I don't think about that, Jeff. I'm like, I'm just going to fucking make this messy sketch and give it to Jeff and let it, let's see what he does. <laughs> Corey and I have this system where, you know, I, yeah, I'm overly detailed. Yeah, overly detailed. I like moving, I like tweening and moving symbols or I like making like detailed parts and moving around. And sometimes that hampers my creativity a little while instead of like redrawing a character spinning around I'm just like oh, I'll try to do it with some parts I already have made <laughs> but Corey's like fuck that I'm just drawing every frame drawing, drawing every frame doesn't fucking matter and I'll give it to Jeff and let him fucking deal with it but it doesn't <laughs> but at the end of the day it makes it look better it forces me to say like, alright I'm just gonna have to redraw all this but yeah, it actually makes I, it look fluid and I'm uh, always worried that I'm like I might be doing too much I might be cause I, I have that eh. I have that like slow like tweenish like bounce effects and stuff. We can always and, cut back, but it's good that yeah. yeah, I mean when I when I do like my punch combo and then I give it to Corey and he animates a rough new punch combo and I remake it with Corey's guide, then it just looks like ten times better. So I think we know, compliment I think we all compliment each other because we all kind of know what we're like talking about and stuff. Yeah. It's a group effort. How come you never asked Chris if he wanted to make the game with you guys? Yeah, it was really mean. <laughs> we did. He's he's oh. here now. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah Chris has been doing music. Yeah, uh, yeah that's true. Been doing music. No. A little bit. It's crazy yeah. though because like sometimes it just fits perfectly. If you go up to the you go up to the boss and it immediately starts and the, just the music is like it's like something from a cartoon where it's like set perfectly. It's like the only thing I can bring sync. to the table here is that I know how to uh, make music suit a situation very easily. That's fucking important though for the kind of thing. It's it actually is, been because the music was one of the big struggles where I guess early on I always pictured this '80s horror synth yeah. sound and I kept. Like a John like, Carpenter soundtrack. Kind I kept of thing. digging around for stuff, and just nothing would work. Like, and then when we finally, you know, Jeff had mentioned a few times of putting Chris stuff in, and then when we finally did, then it just all worked. Tom, Tom made his face at me every time I said it. He's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my eighty six. No, See, Jeff wanted. Kidding, uh, kidding. I want, yeah, it's Jeff like, wanted Danny Elfman orchestral stuff, and Tom wanted eighties synth slash chip tunes. Not well, it's really, hard. The chip, it's tunes, like, the chip tunes was actually placeholder. That was never intended. I like Tom's. It just kind of worked. In the middle. I like Tom's idea. Idea yeah. of what he wanted to do, but then every time, okay, we animate everything. There's no audio. Yeah. Then we played it with a little bit of music, and we're like, something's missing here. This is really weird. Do we realized because I had so much shit going on in the background, we needed 
ambient audio. So mm-hmm. we need like gear grinding noises and yeah. things and wind and yeah. That's another thing we don't get away with. And in, in old games, no one had to, no one thought about what sounds the backgrounds were making. Like in yeah. old two D games, we're, we're on that but right now. Now, yeah. now everything has to make a sound. Like you can't have something on the screen that looks like it would make a noise. Sometimes just ambience by itself really works too. Like, it does. It does. Yeah. Depends on the context. So, yeah. so we had that, and we had the characters then start talking, oh, and yeah, then we needed. Really then we're like, yeah. okay, now we need music that isn't gonna drown out the talking, which is also another challenge. So. Yeah, and that's an important thing about your music too, because a lot of musicians they max out all their levels because they think it makes it sound louder, and that sounds good to people a lot of times. But that also completely drowns out the talking. Something that a lot of games do is when someone's or when a character starts talking, they'll uh, they'll mute the lead instrument. And we do that. Oh, yeah. just the lead instrument though. Yeah. So like there might be uh, like you know. The drums, the the bass, and the lead, and they'll mute the lead. So oh, I know what you're talking about. They do that in Kingdom Hearts a lot. Uh, Yeah, yeah. So, but then there's like some like there's like examples where they just kind of like turn the audio down. And yeah, that's fine too. That works. Yeah, yeah. But it's like it's actually better when they just can kind of take that out and have like that ambient stuff because yeah, it's more organic that way. It feels better. So when when you're doing the music, you can render the lead and the and then everything else behind it and have them both playing on top, and then the character starts talking, and you'll just like turn down the lead. The whole like the idea of like designing a game it really is like um i guess there's a lot of factors you have to think about because there's a lot of like when we're designing it's like is this fun do people like this is this a good idea will this be fun is this going to take too long and it's just like you you never think and and then it all comes down to like you you see these people like these games that get released and i didn't really want to get into a tangent about this but it's like kind of something as people like say oh this game sucks it's horrible Controls are terrible, everything about it is bad. And it's like, they probably went through development hell because it's so fucking bad. It's like, there's probably some other reasons as to why it's like really controls terrible and stuff. Right, yeah, they didn't, they didn't like, all right, last day of work, we finished, we, we did it right on time. Everything. They hold it up, he's like, Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My magnum opus. Right, no, yeah. that, that didn't happen. They're like, shit, we've, we ran out of money. I think people, well, we gotta get this out the door. They just exactly. get mad at like the big developers because they, they should know better than to release a game not finished. Yeah, they yeah. should just delay. But then that bitching and then that response has become the standard. Yeah. I think as long as, as companies are asking for pre-orders, that is to say we have no promise that our game will be good and that they could deliver whatever they want, it doesn't matter, it's been yeah. pre-ordered. As long that. as they're doing that, I think people have the right to complain about yeah. it being garbage. Mm. But when people are creating a quality product or trying to and it ends up sucking, I, there should be a level of like, take it for what it's worth or leave it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. But it's like, you know... I, are they going, to me, it's like it's a standard that goes hand in hand. Yeah. Take the money for free, uh, you know, in advance, that's <laughs> <laughs> we should move on. Okay, video, video games then. Video, video games. games. Uh, Swain, video Swain, games. Swain, 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 Swain. Hey, buddy Should we boy. talk about Swain? Can we talk about Grease Play? Let's, let's talk, talk about, let's about Grease Play. Alright, in okay, an earlier, an earlier episode. This is the whole reason to play games one, is Grease Play. There was a story we told about you. Trucker Justin told me about this. I'll be happy I mentioned it. There was a story about how 9-11 happened. Yeah. Oh. Well, that wasn't the first time I Grease Played. <laughs> that wasn't griefing. All that right. was him being yeah, a psycho. All right. <laughs> All right, so in my, in my defense, of course, like we were kind of talking about this earlier. You were old I'm enough a, to know better. I, yes, I was. I was like, I was like twenty. I should have absolutely. Um, I, no, I think I was. It was two thousand one. Yeah, so I was. I was nineteen at the time. Yeah. So I'm in college, and I just found out about this. I. I'm not going to try to defend anything, right? I'm not going to try to cast myself in a great light It was here. a weird time. It was a strange time, and I did not know how to deal with this. You didn't know how to deal, right. I didn't know how to deal with it, right? right? So, you know, a bunch of people just died. I'm, I'm a panicked, I'm like, I'm like Mind Chamber. I, at the time, I can't stand flying. I'm right. terrified of it. Right. So the idea is just like, like the cold sweats come on. I don't know what to do about it. So this is, this is the weird, insane way that I cope with it is by going on to my favorite game, StarCraft. Yeah. Uh, at this time, I'm, I have been, since high school, like making games to grief people, where the whole point of the map is that you join it and it finds new and creative and I find interesting ways for the game to kill you without you having any chance of being able to, to win. There's no win. Right. You can't win. It's just the game picks people off. And it's right. all about me being able to kind of come in like Agatha Christie and then there were none. Like I'm, uh, The killer is one of the people that's like, it's like Clue, basically. Like right. the killer is one of you. So I'm in there like watching, participating, pretending like I'm just some dumb idiot. Oh, I love this game. I just downloaded this map from this guy. I, I was fun. I'm going to play it again. You guys want it in? I've been designing these maps for a time, right? I made a map called, I think it was uh, the World Trade Center RPG. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must have made this map in 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, if you put version, like, a high number, and then put the word gold all in caps after yeah. that, yeah. or platinum, people people like it more. <laughs> so it's a ver- version one of this game is version five gold. And so, <laughs> so it's already obviously gone through many renditions. 
<laughs> and, and many incarnations of testing. Yeah. And, yeah. and so the whole purpose of the game was you would sit there and you'd look at these two command centers, which are the human race in the game, the Terrans, have these like bases. Yeah. And they're not like sky, skyscrapers or anything. They're just like little round looking like, like fat boy donut buildings. <laughs> yeah. And then off the side of the screen, two planes will each crash into each of these buildings, causing them to be set on fire. And then they get destroyed in the opposite order they were hit, just like the World Trade Center. And then this text comes on the screen and goes, ha 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 ha. I don't know. I, eventually, after uh, this, uh, um, uh, uh, after this, the uh, <laughs> a character it was like, "This is how he dealt with it." It's like some doctor, like, "Yeah, well, it, was, right. it was more like, ah, oh, <laughs> your fellow Americans, dead." Yeah, my fellow. All right. The first that, thing you do is go on StarCraft and recreate it. To, all right. No, this is where I will say, <laughs> in my defense, I wasn't laughing then. He's like, crying, I was just, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, uh, like, yeah, screen. I didn't know how to deal with it. Uh, <laughs> I did something I really, <laughs> really didn't. I'm laughing now because I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed. Yes, I'm very ashamed. Uh, just like at the time, we created a game called Ching Chong Beautiful, and after the fact, like in retrospect, that was probably a bad idea. Mm. So I, I won't describe the rest of the StarCraft map. It doesn't get worse than that. That's pretty much like <laughs> that's the gem. Kid, is it possible to get worse? Than that? <laughs> well, there's a part involving a, a president and a sniper and a, oh. a bunch of other stuff that, and a lot of racism. See, I did something <laughs> just, similar. Just, I, didn't, I didn't pull any punches <laughs> with this, you and, oh, and I deleted boy. the map soon after I made it. I think I played it for like a, a, a day. I, I started a couple maps to see how people respond to it. And a lot of people are like, wow, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I did that. I did the same thing, though, with uh, Fly Simulator 95. Yeah. So I, my, my sister was in You're the You're scum. You make me sick. No, but I, was, I wasn't even American. I was <laughs> right. just like, I was in a little edgy asshole. Uh -huh. And I flew the plane into the, the plane into the building, but it doesn't explode, it just like, it gets stuck to the building by its tip. And I was like, yeah. ah. and my sister ran and told my, my dad about it, my dad was just like... <laughs> you ran and told him. Yeah, but I was just like... Dad, dad! Like, my, my dad doesn't like laugh at that kind of shit, but he was laughing at how upset she was over it. Yeah, right, that's, that's what, right, to be fair, that's why I'm laughing now, yeah. and that, that's what I try to get out of the grief playing. Yeah. You guys are is, way worse than me. Yeah. I only animated a kid's tumor exploding, and you guys are way worse than that. <laughs> that's pretty bad. That. What games have we all played together that we've done this? Red Dead was a lot of fun. Red Dead was the one where you and I, like, really we bonded. Super Supreme dicks to everyone, and we'd yeah. hide in the saloon and, and like, just take out anybody just trying to play the game. Everybody yeah. just come and try to kill us. We, uh, yeah. What else do we got? Well, for me, it's like my when I first, because I mean, of course, I grieved whenever I got a chance. You like, have to. Yeah, it's obviously for me. It started with like, let's go, let's go with the blue basics. So we went with Minecraft. Okay. When, yeah. Oh yeah. Minecraft yeah. was an easy target yeah. because you you can join millions of different servers and you can just join you can gain the admin's trust and fuck them over the last thing. <laughs> yes, they know. you can. And it's like and so, this is a game system where yeah. the, more than anything else, this isn't like oh I jump into COD and I, I team kill ha 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 <laughs> like oh I ruined a couple minutes of this guy's life. Minecraft is the is the pinnacle of investment of player time. <clears throat> so I went I joined this guy's server. Yeah, he had a bunch of like beautiful monuments, like they were like beautifully done. And then I got with my friends together, and I'm like, let's put C4, or like, let's put TNT under every single one of his things, and when he says that he's, like, gonna update the server, let's blow him all up while he's doing that, so... I was gonna ask how you deal with rollback. <laughs> so, he was saying, like, hey guys, gonna update the server soon, and we were like, oh fuck, so we got together, we had this, like, underground, like, redstone, like, fucking bomb thing set up. So you up. set it off from 100 miles away. Right, when he was, like, he was, like, uh, he's, like, talking about what he's gonna do, because he trusted us, uh, four of us, and we... we he fucking set it off and he was like doing it and it exploded and his server actually got so fucked up that he couldn't even go into it because his spawn points were all fucked up people were spawning near cows and like in like creeper ditches and shit and he had to completely redo his entire we fucked him up so bad we just destroyed everything bravo bravo that's it, no i i, I try to sometimes avoid like, it was infiltration it was infiltration to think like if somebody's like level of hubris is great enough i don't mind like people destroying stuff like it's it's really cringeworthy i think and and Jeff, you probably agree. Yes. Like, it's like, mean. Like hitting on the waitress, you know? Like, it's just one of those things where you go in and you you just pick on somebody. But mm -hmm. if this guy was was really asking for it, then I'm, I'm down with that. No, he was a, no, he was actually, like, a huge prick because he tried yeah. to restrict the blocks you could use. Like, mm -hmm. I would be, like, I told what him, a like... Nazi. Yeah, I was using, like, a lot of cobblestone or, like, like <laughs> hard cobblestone, and he took it away. And I'm like, why can't I use cobblestone anymore? He's like, you can only use brown dirt blocks because you've been using too much cobblestone. And I only use, like, a 64 
set, and I'm like, uh-huh. I'm like, I didn't know there was a restriction, and so I eventually. Whereas on his gave, monuments, it's probably like he's using every block. <laughs> he or some, yeah, wants. exactly. He had like so. these fucking like Plymouth. He used to come there with his like autistic friends, and they would laugh and like be like, I'm "Recording this for my, uh, I'm gonna do the uh, school project. I'm recording this monument. I'm gonna show it off in like a big video montage." And I'm like, "You wait, motherfucker. I'm gonna find, <laughs> I'm gonna find the right time." And he had all this stuff. He had like a spaceship. He had like a just like a giant like a pyramid like thing. He was he was autistic to the max. Now I Swain, took him out. I took him out. Swain wouldn't blow up a building, but his 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 ideas were far more insidious. Mine, mine got like uh, pretty <clears throat> psychedelic, like outside the realm of normal thinking. <laughs> um, one of my favorites I saw people do, but I never I never did, which yeah. I love is I, I think it's called lava stoning. I forgot what they call it, but so you could set fire to someone's house. All right, there's a lot of funny yeah. videos where like the guy is trying to light his uh his fireplace in his yeah. house, and it like he he's like this is how you set it up so the fire doesn't jump blocks because yeah. it'll like like find nearby voxels and like set the blocks on fire and right and he sets fire to his house and the whole thing gets destroyed <laughs> and the whole video is like a minute long like it does it takes no time at yeah, all yeah he's so, like he's really soft spoken and like yeah. well, here you go oh oh oh, oh wait wait oh oh, oh. <laughs> and, and, by then he's and like, you don't wish it on him like yeah, you're, you're it's, rooting it's, for him but you, you know really it's gonna bad. happen it's like it's like a cringe video almost you yeah. just feel so bad you for can him. you can feel bad for him you can afford to because you know it's gonna happen anyway so yeah. you get the best of both worlds <laughs> and his yeah. whole house is ruined <laughs> So I, one thing I, I found uh, from watching other people's videos, and I wish I could take credit for this, yeah. is you find someone's like monument or their home or something, and you dump lava on it. Now, it sounds like, yeah, you could just like set fire to it or it's going to destroy the blocks. Not necessarily. What you need is you need enough lava and enough water buckets so that you dump lava all over something, <laughs> like a house. The lava will pour out as far as and as well as it can, mm-hmm. and then you dump water over it and then pick up the water block. And what that does is it completely encases whatever thing you're doing, their house, their monument, their, like, their ship, their farm whatever in cobblestone and then you do another layer on top of that and you just encase their house in a cocoon of cobblestone that, t- that takes you no time at all because you could be placing TNT blocks yes you yeah. could be placing cobblestone but yeah. just by placing the lava and letting it coat it in this like thin candy shell of lava and then building doing water on top of it you just coat it and you could do this inside their house you can do this anywhere and it gets destructive because they have to try to find their home dude somewhere in here like you know how they say that sculptors have to envision the shape underneath <laughs> the block of marble well, it's, it's like, not more like, literally you're true like, you're Michael Michael your, and I get yeah. to find your house you're, you're giving a real life experience do you remember when sand used to be like something that when it fell on a player it suffocated them yeah it, I think it crushes now but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but before when it actually like suffocated and crushed them, like it occupies the same space as you or something. We yeah. would like go to like these. There's like these big tree forts that people would get tree from. Uh-huh. There was like a, a tree reserves in certain places, and we would like take sand and we'd stuff it in the top of the trees. When people were hitting wood, uh-huh. it would fucking suff- kill them because they right would, yeah because like, they're digging these, up like, and you never dig up the yeah Minecraft and they too. would like suffocate them. And we would just spend most of our time sticking sand in the trees. I like that. Yeah, so you have. <laughs> I love that. That's that's perfect. <laughs> Corey, so we, you and I need to spend more time online. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah, I get it. Like you have, you have these logs, right, that represent the tree. Uh, you just trunk, sit back and, and watch the these people come top. up and That's start perfect. hitting and fucking die. And That's shit perfect. Explodes. Setting it up so that they you kill themselves is the best. Man. It's man a, being dicks in Minecraft. It's easy. It's it's fun. Kids tell get the story. And, okay. tell, the, tell the pig story. Well, in, in Tomomoto's server, I think the first thing we did was uh, I had discovered how like my goal was to make as much noise, like like create sound pollution in, in Tomar's <laughs> server, and this is our friend's server. <laughs> <laughs> and he would share he would share his link I think to the, the IP to get to this thing with, with people so there were a lot of people I didn't know which is great because I don't like to grief people I know uh, so I, I I was trying to be more like like Corey's being psychological with this yeah. their actions cause their defeat exactly yeah. so so I, I discovered that you could build uh, animal and monster generators and we would create pig farms underneath people's houses where you would you would build the block <laughs> and you'd place it because we it was like full like creative mode where you could uh, if you're admin you could like do whatever yeah. so I don't know why Tomar to this day says he didn't want to stifle my creativity. That's why he not only didn't ban me, but kept me an admin on that server forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is true. I felt a level of responsibility that actually kind of like leashed me in. So I wasn't going to destroy people's houses, but I was going to do things like build these pig generators under people's houses. <laughs> you were so going to make them quit voluntarily. Yeah, <laughs> like I just want to make it as bad an experience for them as possible. <laughs> Without actually taking away what is quintessentially Minecraft to them, yeah. they can still play fully. They just don't know that when, next time they're off the server, I'm going to mine underneath your house from nearby, and I'm going to build a little cavern underneath your home. 
your little your little corner of the world, and I'm gonna build a pig generator <laughs> next to lava and next to a, a soil, uh, like a piece of, of. I've had to like get the sun to hit a piece of soil so it turns into grass because otherwise it won't like spawn the animal on it. Oh my god! Then I have to cover over it, so I have oh, to do wow. it during the right time of day. Um, and the grass I think doesn't go away after it's covered unless you dig it up and put it back down as dirt. The grass had to be next to lava so that the pigs would spawn and then jump into the lava and continuously die. <laughs> and so they would. And it, this horrific sound of pigs screaming would, would, would just would, would loop and you can hear it for like like chunks of the of the game away like yeah the and but happening overlapping each other so it's like you go to your house and it just it sounded like an abattoir like it sounded like something horrible was happening and it was and it was going on right beneath your feet and you had no idea and i got it efficient enough where i could do it in a like like a too tall like three by four area so i could just have this little tiny pocket underneath people's houses when i had monster generators i uh, there was like a few servers that were really they had like really good like uh digging mods and stuff and, uh -huh. and it was like one of those things where it's like when you got bit by a poisonous spider you would legitimately like be poisoned you'd actually uh -huh. need to go to a, a medic medical bay and stuff yeah i've seen right like monitors <laughs> so i made like fucking like 16 by 16 rooms and just filled them up with spiders and just stuck them all over underground so when people were digging they yeah. would fucking open up a thing of spiders <laughs> just, that would just right. come out and poison <laughs> right them. that like that urban legend of the chick who's got like yeah. the, the the pimple that it, when it pops it's yeah. just like baby spiders everywhere exactly but in the minecraft experience yeah so they were like digging and i would purposely like put like iron blocks because that's like the most common thing people would dig yeah and and put it in areas, but they would already hear like, pss, 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 and they wouldn't know what it is. Yeah, they would assume that it probably wasn't in front of an iron thing. So I did that a lot. I, I tried to get creative, like I tried yeah. to do things where I put iron blocks underneath it. There was like these things that uh, I forget what they are, but they kind of like smash eternally. So if somebody stepped on them, yeah, would, like, uh, pistons, I think. Yeah, it yeah. would like shove them around down there, and uh -huh. eventually, like if they <laughs> they would eventually like try to find the way out and get shoved in the lava. I love that. That's so. ingenious. Yeah, just right, just like move them around so they're not only are they just like you've taken control of their player away, yeah, of uh, their character and their avatar, but like when they finally get to play again, they have no idea where they are. Yeah, I love that. So I pretty much eventually I got. I haven't played Minecraft in a long time because mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, kids like We uh, Minecraft I, I th craze. eventually tried to create a meat grinder that would just like, it was an ultimate tower of just pigs dying. <laughs> with, with water was flowing down towards like cacti, like we had layers of pigs. It didn't really work out that well. Mm -hmm. um, it, we just made infinite pigs and just kind of like lagged the server down even for us. But I think the day that that server just like kind of went downhill I th from my actions was when I learned how you can get redstone to create like a, an energy pulse but so that it loops forever. Like, you create this infinite loop where it just keeps creating this, like, this pulse that goes on, off, on, off, on, off, on, oh, off. Yeah, yeah. And attach that to a music block, uh, or multiple music blocks, and you can infinitely create this or any instrument you want. <laughs> this one note. Ding, 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 ding. And it would just happen forever. And I would place these underneath people's houses as well. Uh, and I got to a point where people are expecting that, oh, Swain's gonna just come and dig in and do this again. So what I started doing was I would place the music box uh, in such a way where mm. I'd create the music box and I started layering it with TNT. So... <laughs> Because it got to a point where this is back when if you dig a, a TNT block, it activates it. <laughs> and, so, and so I was detonating entire entire areas of, of the map. Their house and they to find I, it. And I, I felt bad because apparently Ego, uh, Ego Raptor, and Tomar had built this huge uh, recreation of, of Disneyland yeah. in, in California. <laughs> And I, uh, I didn't know that a buddy of mine, uh, I think it's Impending Riot on uh, on Newgrounds, mm -hmm. he was, I think, the one who first started placing the TNT, not me. I was creating music block, uh, my music traps all over uh, Disney. And, you and ruined, he, they ruined their whole world. Uh, right, and he started placing TNT everywhere. Uh, he, like, he would, after I was done, he'd like create a sapper tunnel into my thing and put TNT so that when Tomar found it, it would blow up Disney and I would get in trouble. So he was, so he was like, like, like counter griefing me. I, he was, a, he was freaking, uh, he was a double agent that son of a bitch <laughs> i think tomar actually by chance managed to find the first one of those yeah. and asked me why i had done this and i told him i didn't do that i swear uh and so he managed to like like we had him go in like a bomb squad team to like try to find the, <laughs> the music boxes without without detonating the tnt could you imagine like every hit you have to stop digging the moment you you like break the block knowing there could be tnt on the other side that must have been horrifying and i really do feel bad about that minecraft bomb squad yeah well because that's that's basically what it i was. remember there's server they had a they allowed you to like turn invisible and shit and strike people with lightning oh yeah yeah that was the when they did the the survival mode i think right the one that had creepers and everything i was admin for like a day on that and then they, yeah. they got I, I think it was Iggy removed me yeah <laughs> but um yeah, fucking, i remember I, 
I followed the guy into a cave and I was like flying above him invisible and every time he got deep into the cave I'd punch a brick on the wall and just make that 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 little noise. <laughs> and the guy was freaking out. He was like punching around in the air trying to find like what was happening. That's hilarious. <laughs> but, uh, that was the one that was where I put the lava block and, and it was Hyptosis, the guy that did the art for Alice uh, Alice uh-huh. is dead. Hyptosis was playing and he never I don't think he likes me anymore. Um, and I, I can't say as I blame him. That's where I dug the whole like one little block out of his ceiling and put a lava in there and then placed like dirt right under it. <laughs> so then he's like, mm, what do you this? <laughs> He dug it out, and, and I remember watching him go into his house, and then and then seeing the prompt that it said he had just died. From and I felt really bad. I ran in there because he's play, he's actually trying to play survival mode, and I'm just fucking around. And so I ran in there to actually I saved a bunch of his stuff that his character had dropped, like his like I found the diamonds that he had dropped right on the edge of the lava right before it grabbed it, because uh, then all of his shit would have been gone. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I, I contained it before his house caught on fire. I don't know how he. It's like getting killed by a freaking turtle. Like, how does that happen? My ceiling. It just kills him. Yeah. Like I guess he dug it and was just stood there and just waited till the lava caught him and he died. And I, I got. In the one hand, I felt bad, but I I, I didn't because you kind of are asking for it at that it's point. Minecraft. Who cares? Yeah, you guys. Minecraft. You guys have found a new a new grief a new way to ruin people's lives though. Yeah, we did. Really now, nice. what do you know, Jeff, about Space Station Thirteen? Because I'm gonna have okay. the mic to, to I'll, Chris. I'll, Chris. Chris. I was I was on Skype one night and Chris is like, Hey, I'm gonna stream. A game you want to did you really wanna see it i didn't know what this was he's like yeah it's called space station 13 it sounds like some like loser faggy shit right like that's like quote unquote that's what it sounds I'm like, like is this some new it game is, is, it, is this some new are, yeah. this is like the newest thing and he's like well yeah but it's still like 15 years old but it's for some had like some, some, some kind of resurgence yeah but i couldn't tell what the fuck was going on it's like an overhead view of a space station basically it looks like a Baby MS Paint Lego drawings. It, it plays like one of the old still. Let's start from the, from the beginning, right? Okay. So me and Ding Dong were like, we're pretty good like griefers. Like we yeah. go around like stabbing people in, in eyes with screwdrivers. It's pretty <laughs> great. That's become my signature <laughs> move. <laughs> but, like you'll like run up to these like little cute characters and stab them in the eye with screwdriver, and they're like. Ah! And you're like, oh man. And you stab them until the game indicates yeah. like they have fallen limp and gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like it, it like spells out what's happening. It's like they are blind in one eye. They, they, they're lifeless, and you leave them, and you gotta drag them into like a locker, and like there's a blood trail that follows them and stuff. But yeah, do you put them in the locker and weld it shut? Yeah, you can weld it shut, right? But yeah. th- th- this isn't the, the good part of the story. The good part is that uh, I went over to Swain's house one day, and I was like, Swain, I, I think you might like this. And uh, he's like, Oh, okay. And I put it on, and at first he was kind of like, oh, Yeah, this is interesting. This is pretty cool. And then like three weeks later, he. He's a fucking master griefer on it. He's like, but I, but I really every, like the game. He, he's learned I really like the way, it. He's learned every single system. He's learned how to be like an engineer. He's learned how to be <laughs> the only one I haven't figured the, out is botanist and shaft miner. I, I don't know how to go mining. He's figured out all these creative ways to like fuck with people without getting banned. Every time yeah. the admin will message him and be like, "Why did you like do this?" He'll have a fucking story and get away with it. <laughs> yeah, no, because I understand the rules. I understand both the in-game rules, or AKA space law, <laughs> space law, which is how to behave in space, and also the <laughs> server rules uh, and yeah. what their number one rules don't be a dick but. I want to watch you play because these guys you just murder somebody and they drag the body to like an airlog like if they get rid of the body if they, okay, get rid of the, <laughs> they find out yeah that's called that's called spacing they can't even like get the body out of the airlock yeah. they're like being chased Wait, tell us your best exploits okay I, I remember when you and I were playing once I, I think you got jumped by a guy who was like Apache chief something yeah. I think he jumped you and we were completely cheating and uh, you, you and you were screen sharing so I knew exactly where you were yeah. so I went over to where you were I, I stun batoned him yeah. so I just beat him to death I handcuffed him, and at the time I couldn't figure out how to open the airlock. I beat him in the head with the stun baton, turned off so it didn't use up all the charges. Yeah. Um, I remember they asked me, why did I kill him? I'm like, I, I have proof that he attacked another like member of security or something. <laughs> <laughs> like my proof is that I meted the shit out of it, and if they knew that's bannable, like they'll get rid of you for life from that server. Yeah. And also, just a clarification: Chris is banned from every every notable server. server. I can't believe I'm banned from all of them, but one. Yeah. Because in one day, we got banned from all of them because Chris is like, "Hey, this game is great. You just grief people. You can just keep eating hamburgers until your character shits himself on the floor, and then when people run over the, the shit stain, like they slip. You hear it go, which yeah, is the most satisfying then, and, thing in the world. And then they're on the floor for like a minute. Yeah. It's like it's like eight painful seconds of them just sitting there. <laughs> We discovered that a totally legit job is janitor. It's underwhelming, uh, it's underappreciated, but you have access to the most devious and diabolical tool in this game, which is a mop and a bucket. Okay. And the reason this is diabolical <laughs> is that you can clean floors, and your job is to go around wherever there's like muddy prints, blood is almost everywhere, like in the in a yeah. station within five minutes of a new Especially round. Especially towards the end of the round, like it's just all hell breaks loose. Yeah. And rounds okay. last between an hour and a half. Like they can go from anywhere from like twenty minutes to like three, four hours, five hours, whatever, yeah, if they just want to keep it going. And once you die in a round, you're done. 
Yeah. You cannot play again. So with the janitor, all you got to do is you go to some place where there's going to be a lot of blood that justifies you doing this. <laughs> so the admins can't get mad at you for, for making the floors wet. Uh, and where a lot of foot traffic will take place <laughs> at the point where falling down would be the most inopportune thing. And you know, we talked about, can we make people slip and fall out the airlock? <laughs> uh, we couldn't find any justifiable way to do that where someone would be running full speed at an airlock yeah. or they're not trying to go out already. We decided it's it's the hallway intersection, the T-section where the hall goes to the escape <laughs> shuttle at the med bay. Yeah. And the reason is because every dead body is going or everybody who's wounded is being dragged to med bay. We would constantly wet the floor in front of med bay and watch as security, the head of personnel, the head of security runs by. Because nobody just walks in the game. If you walk, you won't slip. But everybody's got to hit run so they can get around faster. And so they're just running around. And these are games where you can get from one end of the of the ship to another in only like uh, maybe 60 seconds if you know where you're yeah. going. Maybe a minute and a half and there's 70 people playing. Mm -hmm. 70 fucking people in this station that's about that size. There's so much foot traffic. Sometimes there's a, an antagonist around called revolutionaries where men in black like flash are you mm -hmm. and now you wake up and you're brainwashed and you belong to the revolution and you, only people to the revolution can oh, see wow, cool. other people. There's a red R over your head. Yeah. It's so great because once you're revolutionary, so long as you do not kill or harm any other revolutionary and obey your bosses, mm. you can get away with killing anybody and doing anything to the station you want. So naturally, me and Crinkle set up the, the, the our little water trap. Yeah. We started referring to it as the spider web. And anybody that would run by and go <laughs> like that, we'd beat them in the head with a, with a toolbox, which is the best like yeah. like civilian item you can get. We'd beat them in the head with a toolbox till they're dead yeah. uh, and drag the body back into med bay and then clean the floors right away so no one knows what's going on. We killed so many heads of staff, like the chief engineer, the research director, just all these people running by. Just going through this main thoroughfare, and they're just slipping, and security can't do anything about it. The game is very, very deep, right? So you'll, yeah. you'll spawn. If you choose to be like anything, you'll have a, an ID badge that's on your thing, right? You can yeah. take off your coat, and your ID badge will be on your coat. You can leave it on the floor, and then you, you yeah. don't have an identity anymore. Someone can pick it up and then take on your identity, kind of. Yeah, like you still have your name, like it, it appears over you because you look like you. Yeah. But if you wear a gas mask or a welding mask or something that conceals your face, you're listed as unknown. We should tell the two stories, right? There yeah. was one game where Swain got, uh, apprehended because he was going around being a griefer and he got caught. We, we tried doing like a breakout where um, <laughs> it, it, on this one specific server uh, you, you can walk up to the jail cell and look in at people on, on the inside of the jail cell. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh wait, this, there's glass and there's wires. If I go get like a sledgehammer or a toolbox and smash the window, then if I get wire cutters I might be able to get to you. And he's like, go yeah. do it, go do it. And I went and got it and I smashed the glass and it took like fucking ages. We were on the lookout <laughs> for people walking by because if they see you, you're caught. Okay, yeah. And then I I smashed the glass and I was like, okay, now I need to take the glass out and then I need to use the wire cutters. So I used the wire cutters. I, I cut into the wire and just got fried by the electricity. Yeah, because right, the electricity was still on. Yeah, short of that. <laughs> Most of the grief in that game was, and this is how we ended up banned from all these servers, was you just go and you grab a screwdriver, you find someone who's not wearing any eye gear because it protects them. It doesn't even let you like swing at them. Yeah. Which is good that you can't hit them and, oh, whoops, I'm armored so it doesn't hurt me. Yeah. It doesn't even let you try in the first place, which is nice. And we would just find somebody and, and you pick the eyes as their target. And, uh, and just stab them in the eye with a screwdriver till they're dead. I, I, I got, we went on this one roleplay server and we were trying to decide how we're gonna, how we're gonna do this. Uh, I think... <laughs> Like I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know what Chris did, but he got zip tied, and we didn't know how to break out of handcuffs yet. So we like complained to security, like help, like this robot was uh, was messing with me. Uh, please, I'm like I don't have any like crimes against me. I didn't do anything. Could you let me out? And yeah. They're like, all right, yeah, no problem. So they let him out. And so he, in, in like in net speak, Chris, because this is a role play server, and this is completely off limits. He goes, okay, THX BB, I'll suck you off later. I'll, I'll suck U off LTR. Or L8R, and then he runs off. He gets an admin warning for the elite speak because he was being lewd to somebody, or to the net speak uh, because he's being lewd. They threw him in jail or something like that. <laughs> this is a complete like shitty role play server. So we're like, all right, we got to get yeah, back to these it guys. Super seriously. So I had this plan. I'd, sp I'd spawn as a medical guy. I was a, a, a doctor, and yeah. uh, so I had this big plan where I was going to find these like bags of blood and like spill them all over the floor. <laughs> And just make a, a bloody mess and, make, and, and create a crime game. scene. I couldn't figure out how to do it though. Yeah. It's so easy. I just didn't have a sharp instrument to like open it, oh. uh, or like or like put it in a syringe and like spray it on the ground. I just I couldn't figure it out because it was like our first day. Yeah. So I just went in the kitchen and started throwing them at the chefs. <laughs> I got arrested for contraband. 
I had stolen the blood from where it's supposed to go, so I got arrested for contraband, and I got arrested for battery, because I was throwing it at, at chefs. So they hauled my ass right to jail. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to grief the way I wanted. And they got me, because I was like, they threw it back at me like they're the ones who did it. Yeah. Uh, but the, the chefs all had gloves on, so they didn't leave fingerprints. They fucking fingerprinted the bags of blood, and I wasn't wearing my latex gloves, so they completely knew who it was. And if they didn't get me for it's that, ridiculous. they could have got me for fucking fiber yeah. from my coat. Like, that's how detailed this stupid game is. You it's know, ridiculous. It's super detailed. Um, yeah. One time me and Swain, I spawned as the chef, and he spawned as, as the bartender, so we were right next to each other, and yeah. he had a bartender's assistant called Leah. So it was some girl called Leah, and I, I came in and started shouting at her, saying, like, fuck you for no reason. And, <laughs> and then the security came, and Swain was just like, it was all her officer, and she got, like, dragged away. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of people, we got a lot of people, uh, thrown, thrown around for that. <laughs> And then later back, we came back and she was back there, so she must have been like, <laughs> you, know, you got the wrong person. I, there was uh, one server where I, I, the head of personnel was being a real piece of shit. Yeah. And so I'm like, this guy deserves to die, and I'm now banned from that server, I believe. So I, like, he was just being a numbskull. So I, I killed him, I axed him, I grabbed a fire axe and just took it to his arms until yeah. he died. His limbs are flying all over the place. <laughs> they somehow either managed to, I, even though he was dead, they either cloned him, which I'm pretty sure they did, yeah. uh, which gives the player who's dead the option to jump back into the body. Otherwise, the clone is just dead and lifeless, and it didn't work, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure they cloned him after uh, I got arrested right away by, by cyborgs and the, like, the head of security killed me. Yeah. So I logged into one of my many accounts, which is, to, again, a bannable offense. You're not supposed to do this. Yeah. I switch accounts. I jump back in. I find out the head of personnel is dead, uh, but has been has been like resurrected somehow. Yeah. Like, fuck this. So I came back as a security guard. I stunned him. <laughs> I handcuffed him. I dragged him to the airlocks, and I, and I, I just threw us both out of the space. <laughs> and I screen capped it, so I'll always remember this moment of me facing him with the warning of no O2 and low pressure, and we're just floating off into space. And he goes, and there's a, there's still the chat log of him, rogue security, he says. He's shouting rogue security on his, on his comm set so that people come in and save him. You can goddamn right rogue security. Let's make this the thumbnail for the episode. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll find it. I'll, I'll send it to you immediately when I get okay. home. I had so much fun with that. And <laughs> I think I emoted something, because you can't say something when, like, you're in space. Like, you can't produce sound. Oh, yeah. uh, Like, anything you say comes out as a whisper, because, you know, can't, you know, in space, oh, yeah. can't hear you scream, whatever. Like, aliens. Mm -hmm. um, the tagline. Uh, so I, I did an emote what was it, I, where I, like, I kissed him, is what I did. Yeah. <laughs> so I flew off into space. He's handcuffed. <laughs> Flying off into space, the worst way to die. And because if there's no body, they can't bring him back. Yeah. They can, they have, you actually have to have, like, it can't just be blood. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and it didn't matter because I stun batoned him, handcuffed him, and brought him into space. There was no blood and no in uh, injury whatsoever. No way for them to know. And I'm pretty sure the admins, like, asked me why I did that. And I'm like, I, I don't re actually remember what I said. But I'm pretty sure I got banned from that server. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was for that. You're, like, at a re whole new level of love. Uh, yeah, it's, level it's very creative. I've, I figured out how to build the singularity, how to make a black hole that powers the ship in this game. Not as complicated as it sounds because it's all just pieces. <laughs> And learning how Pretty to make simple. things is step one to breaking it. Like, uh -huh. now I know how to, like, open up a panel in the floor and cut this wire and put the panel back, and, like, the, re the ship is just not powered forever. <laughs> and, <this> is... <laughs> and no one could do Because there's, like, one major line goes from the, the power source to wow. the batteries to the rest of the ship, it spider webs off. Uh, all you have to do is cut the one main power, and no one will ever know that that's why it's not working. The game is really detailed, too, so if, like, if you spawn as a, a chef or something, it'll, like, change the way you speak. So, like, it'll put, like, Z instead of the. And, oh, yeah. And, and, like, and it goes, and it, it, it makes you the, the Swedish chef, so it puts bork, bork, bork at the end of yeah. anything you say. Well, yeah. uh, mimes can't talk. But, yeah, or if, yeah. if you get, like, smacked on the head with a toolbox, and if you type in, like... Or if you lose teeth, all of your T's, uh, T's and THs come out like Sean Connery. Like, yeah. it, it spells everything like this. Yeah, or, or if, if you get, like, knocked out, and if you're trying to talk, it'll be like, this person tried saying, like, I went to the store, but instead he'll be like, I... And it'll, it cuts it'll, out words and letters. Really? Yeah. When you get it zapped does, or electrocuted, it does it, it really like, well. it's... I, 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 I want to do you <laughs> to stop. Yeah. yeah, it's really clever. Yeah. It's a really good game. I like the visually, idea visually, it's hard to see, understand I, what's going on. I like the I'll show you a picture. Somebody, it's not gonna help people. Like, somebody was like, I want to design a game where it's like, people can truly experience a true role-playing space game where there's bad people and good people. Each and job I, I has a lot of, like, but work I, I don't it. think they yeah, realize like that they nobody created does their a job, game but... that because you know what that was kind of like the ship for me but it was more like oh the ship I played that oh my yeah, god but it was I will tell you how I grieved in that next <laughs> yeah, no, no. for a new player for a person who doesn't understand the game it's really hard to oh. have you guys played the ship before we should um, play the ship it was using like the point. valve I, one of their engines uh, yeah. I think um, the idea is that it can't be it's a multiplayer game it can't be played with like fewer than like two or three people I guess hmm. the premise of the game is that you're, you're on a ship you're like a random person 
with a random name, and somewhere on the ship, out of all the other players, you never are given an NPC, but uh, somewhere on the ship is a target, is another player. You don't know where they are, and you have to hunt them down, look for clues, kind of like follow security to like try to find where they are, and kill that person. They do not know who is coming for them, but they have a target of their own. If you kill someone who is not your target, you get penalized stiffly for points. Uh. Uh, and so that's, you know, you can't just go around killing people. You can. You'll never win. You'll just be this jackass that's killing everybody. <laughs> that's really scary. That's, like, really nerve-wracking. It is, yeah, because you come up on someone. You, the only one you know couldn't be your, like, come, someone come for you is your target. Every single person you see coming, you'll be, like, shitting yeah. your pants. Now, you can't do anything in front of security or they arrest you and then you're out of the game for, like, three minutes or something. Yeah. So you have to plan these hits to happen in, in like, hidden rooms and stuff. Yeah, and you follow It's a very in cool idea. So I discovered that people are, you're allowed to kill the person who's coming for you, but you don't know who they are until they come swinging. It was so easy to grab a gun and go up to somebody, like let's say you're my target, and I aimed like at you, but away from you, and go bang, and you're like, fuck, that guy's after me, you kill me. I was not after you, I was not your target, and you just, your score just went boom, like that. <laughs> yeah. And you were fucked. And I was ruining people's games that way. <laughs> that was like people who were like hardcore trying to play the game, and are like, 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 like Twitch gameplay, like, oh, he's after me, bam, he's dead. That's and what, you're just penalized like, all your I points. That's what I would do. I would, yeah. I would follow people into the room and I would have blunt objects <laughs> and they would be like looking like you know they'd be like kind of scouring around the room and I'd just come in like swinging shit and then they would fucking kill me because <laughs> I didn't want to kill them yeah if you hit them a couple times with the with the spanner yeah. I guess is what British people call a screwdriver and, yeah. or no a wrench so you come in with your spanner and you're whacking at them and like it doesn't kill them right away you know it's a very weak exactly. weapon exactly I, I would yeah. use like those you're not really penalized for ones. hurting them and you could well, send people into combat with no health I, I used to do that and hit them and then run out of the room they'd fucking chase me yeah. and then I'd go into like a room of four the people and start fucking hitting them <laughs> they would be freaking out because they didn't know who it was so they would just start hitting people yeah. and it would just be like someone would have a fucking gun and then just start picking people up <laughs> because most of the weapons in this game are like found objects like a fire extinguisher or a hidden knife and yeah right, oh, right exactly uh, it, like a, a kitchen knife is like a good find finding a weapon is rare but you know awesome. that was like Minecraft I don't want to go back to this fucking game but yeah, in Minecraft that shit. you go up to them and you hit them and then they fucking kill you and then yeah. you're like uh, this guy just killed me <laughs> and then they get banned I, I tried <laughs> that in Space Station 13 and they have a log of when you did anything. Yeah, they've got a log for See, every that's single yeah, that's tiny different. little action. Like, I, I, we, we did a, a roleplay server, um, me and my cousin not that long ago. I told you about this, right, Chris? Where I came you, on as see, a captain. You got addicted to this fucking game. I did. I, I, I went on to this one server and I, I, like, it was a heavy roleplay server. The game had been going for like four hours and nobody picked the captain. Yeah. So I joined on as a captain. Like, I could do more damage this way. It's really annoying, this server. It's not the, it's not set up the way I'm used to because everything is like kind of pseudo open source so they, there's modification server to server that yeah. just don't match from one to the next. So I find my way back to my like captain's bridge. I'm like role playing with these people on, on the, my comm. Yeah. Like, ahoy captain, uh, welcome aboard. Like, ah, oh, thank you. What's the situation? Oh, we're looking for the, the chief medical officer who's gone missing, feared dead. Oh, <laughs> well, who do we have on security? Who, who can get on it? And I'm trying to like hack my way to the, because all these doors are like locked. I eventually get to the captain's quarters. Yeah. I'm like, I hate this server. I need to quit. And I'm not going to just like quit the game. What I do is I, I go into my captain's quarters. I go into my private bed chamber. I pick up a bottle of booze and a cigar. I like the cigar with matches. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to use the match on the matchbook. Then you use the match that's lit on the cigar. Then you put it into your mouth slot. This is the detail of this game. I grab my bottle of booze and my flask and I go into the shower and I commit suicide. <laughs> and then I, I figured this is like a, a just a, like a nice noir way to go. And it's also shitty because by having played the captain and killed myself, no one else can be captain this edition. <laughs> <laughs> and so I type in I type in uh, suicide, yeah. uh, which is the way that you normally do this. This server has it set so no, you can't do that. It says no, you can't do that. Ask an admin if you'd like to kill yourself. And like, all right. <laughs> it's like a fucking hotline. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fucking hotline. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, so I'm going to do Ghost, where, where you don't really kill yourself so much as you go li like limp and lifeless and your ghost flies out of your body, <laughs> and you're basically done with the round, but it's the yeah. same thing as suicide. It's just yeah. like you can actually go back in if the admin says it's okay. So I do that, and then I get a message from the admin. Uh, um, so why'd you do that? He was pissed off because like that's really against server rules on a roleplay server <laughs> to just join in, kill yourself, and leave. <laughs> And I committed suicide in the shower. I turned it on and everything. Like, I turned on the shower, I drank the booze, I smoked the cigar, and I killed myself. And apparently the admin had a log of me having tried to type in suicide. And so he's like, uh, well, it looks like you tried to type suicide, then type ghost, then hit yes. So, uh, would you care to explain what happened? I said it was an accident. <laughs> he goes, he goes, uh, no, it clearly wasn't. <laughs> I go, no, 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 I hit yes by accident. I was just testing out the server commands because I haven't used this one yet. Yeah. Talking directly to the admin. Yeah. He's like, oh. I'm like, yeah, I hit yes by accident. Like, in my server, it's on the other side. I didn't mean to. He's like, oh. 
All right, we'll try not to let it happen again. He probably just could have been uh, like, look, I was a depressed captain. I was role playing as yeah. a depressed captain. I killed myself. Exactly. Well, on that, on that server, well, that's why we we they hadn't like uh, IP banned us yet. On that yeah. server where they hauled us to jail for you for saying I'll suck you off later, baby, <laughs> yeah. and me for throwing the bags of blood. Yeah. We came back in as those new characters, and I found the person who ID'd me, a fellow uh, medical person. Yeah. I found the person who did this. I followed them around and I stabbed her in the eye with a screwdriver <laughs> <laughs> until <laughs> until they caught me. And security finally was chasing me. And I remember I'm running through the halls, mm -hmm. and they finally flashed on me. Like they're locking down the AI and the ship is locking down uh, doors. Like as I'm passing through them, they're locking them down. So they're like, "Fuck, open the doors!" So they're like not catching me until finally they slammed the door shut in this one uh, hallway. And like, yeah. "Fuck, all right." So I go back and I stab one of the security members in the eye. She can't see me, so I'm like, I nearly get away, and the guy like stun batons me and takes me to jail. Yeah, when you stab people in the eyes, their screen goes black. They're blind. Yeah, they can't see anything for a couple seconds. Like it's not permanent. Like it's pain until it comes yeah. back. Be. It can be, yeah, yeah, usually after a couple stabs. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> they take me to jail, uh, and I'm like, fuck, all right. So I, I know I blinded that person. I stabbed them until she, like, fell down. Yeah. But she didn't die, which is my goal. So I'm like, fuck, all right. So I start a new character, new new account. Uh, Chris does the same thing, or he's already on one. And uh, Me and Swain were going through, like, throwaway emails. Like, <laughs> like I, had, I, like, I had, like, Hulius, Bullius, Coolius, Dulius, Fulius, and, like, it just kept going on. Yeah, I have a couple. I'm not going to say the names, because I don't want to get banned from the servers that <laughs> okay. I'm talking about. About. Right. Uh, but it's like a bunch of the same name with like one letter change, like yeah. 69 at the end. <laughs> yeah. And so we, we go back, we, we were like, alright, we know where she's gonna be. Time so for revenge. Time for revenge again. Like, we didn't kill her, so we're not done yet. So I think we managed to kill her. I'm not sure if we did, but... Uh, <laughs> we maimed her. We need to yeah, finish the so job. We know where to find her in okay. fucking medbay. So I make another doctor. I lead us both in there. Okay. And we go in, we grab like the circular saw <laughs> while she's on the table while the robot is operating on her. We grab the circular saw and just start going at her on the table. <laughs> She's like, not again. They, they catch me. They kill me. Chris's character is like, no, no, it wasn't like it was. I was trying to go for him. I was trying to stop him. Or like we talked yeah. him out of it. And I'm fine. Like Chris, just do it. Just fucking kill her. Just fucking kill her. And I think you managed to do it before they got you and dragged you out. Well, the best thing that ever shit. happened was when I got like brought into prison and uh, they were like stripping me down. And then uh -huh. for like one like from microsecond, my hands were free because she was putting me in bed and taking off my handcuffs. Yeah. And for that microsecond, I like punched her in the head and she fell on the floor. And I was like, you Wait! Come and like ran and we started looking as you just her. as you just darted out of there yeah. and knowing what I know now I know how to like to get it so you can take the, the cuffs or whatever that you were using yeah. uh, keep hitting her on the ground so she stays there and yeah. how to uh, handcuff her while she's there <laughs> and now she's your prisoner and you put her in jail yeah. take her ID card and now we're taking see, her see the job. thing is it's like when they're like putting you in handcuffs and shit that there's so many like steps to doing that it's not just like put, in, put her in handcuffs it's like take off the handcuffs you gotta drag it from your inventory onto them and stuff and there's all these different steps so it's it's really hard to remember what step to take next if you're in a rush so it, it feels like you're really like yeah until fumbling. you until you get it down to like muscle memory like a lot of other games yeah and it's all like there's quick keys yeah but you still have to move the mouse around and accurately click on the handcuffs and you have to put it into the hand like the hand controls are ridiculous you put things into your hand and yeah. use it from that hand yeah. by like clicking on that hand it's very weird yeah. it's very clunky when it you get really used feels to it it's like great you're fumbling, like, yeah how did this game keep such a, like a, did it keep a low profile for a number of years I feel like it, it did it's, it's part of this weird like shitty like free game service called Beyond mm -hmm. and it's the only good game on there there's like other games that are like Dragon okay. Ball like role play I read about it said this game sometime. started as like a fluid simulator or something and it evolved really? yeah into right yeah like that's what I heard it was like a uh, an atmospheric or like like some kind of simulation that yeah. some guy designed mm. and then I was I, I watched a video on the history of this thing and like somebody apparently stole the code from the source creator's computer yeah. and started repurposing it into this game and it was oh. really really bad for many years but uh, a couple years ago they they like but they people, finally got to a point where it was like people playable. tinkered with it endlessly for years. I, I, yeah, it, it's like yeah. it's pretty well balanced. Like Swain's found some things that you can do that like completely break it pretty fast. But for the of most course. part, every for job the, has its like its slow progression. Mm -hmm. and yeah, like, the, like the 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 station is like a living organism if you play it to have fun. Mm -hmm. And there are times where I do try to like if I'm if I'm stuck doing a job and I'm not like, given an antagonist to roll that round, mm -hmm. I'm like fuck it. I'm gonna learn how to be a better antagonist mm -hmm. by by doing my job mm -hmm. and figuring out where the, where does this passage go? How can I break into the captain's quarters? without getting caught. Like he's learned how to hack doors and shit. So and it's really not doors. hard. It's uh, it's not hard, but you you have to first know that that's even a thing you can do in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, learn how to do the steps. See, that's... I want people I want people playing my game like they play Space Station 13. Yeah. Whether whether it's... I, I just... I want people to be invested in it and mm -hmm. feel like when they jump in that their little avatar is, is their guy. That's yeah. what I want from our Madness game that we're doing. Like, when someone's playing your game, what do you want them to have out of it? And ideally, like... 
when you're making the game, you want to feel that way about your we, own game. That's when you know you've got it. This right? is actually something that we could talk about this because this is something we discussed where we want to have like an element of interactivity where you can also be nice and an asshole. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like based on what you want to be. Like you can be somebody like where when you help someone up, you can like press a button and let them fall and die mm -hmm. while you're like. You mean like Little up. Big Planet where they're about to stick that jump and you grab and let go so that it screws up their timing and they just <laughs> exactly. fall. Exactly. So just like stuff like that. <laughs> like you you put your hand out to like kind of like they're like oh it's like a thing. It's like oh you're gonna yeah. shake my yeah. hand, but really what you're doing is you're taking their energy and then mm -hmm. you can punch them and knock uh -huh. them out. So it's just like stuff like you know where you fuck with them and then there's just like that sort of thing there's about like three video games and in, in the history of thousands of video games there's maybe like three that could make people laugh so i we want to i think i want to be one of those yeah exactly make a one. make a funny game that you can also want to like grief your friends in <laughs> basically that's it tom you've made a, a shit ton of games <laughs> i just wanted to be lots of fun yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, fun and funny someone plays it they're like this is fun a wild a wild romp and it's funny it's not it's not a game that like uh you, you look at as like emergent <laughs> gameplay but emergent gameplay is something that I like where it's I'm hoping it'll be a game that people can mm -hmm. surprise each other with the crazy shit they I do. I do feel like it'll be like a game where you discover stuff you can do. Like there's things you can do but you have to kind of discover it by fucking around and or watch somebody it. else with a different play style. Like yeah, I don't know if exactly. I showed you things that you didn't know could happen or something Exactly. While I was playing. And then you like So you got you got all that. these people fans of Sleepy Cabin and also uh, people who are know, that know that Tom Fulp and Jeff Bandolin and uh, Corey what's his face are uh, are making uh, this game and uh, I don't think anybody knows a lot about it. What like what can people know about that? That's not like you know. It's a bunch of genre. It's a few genres mashed together. Yeah, it's kind of. There like, you go. There's your answer. Good night, everybody. If you mix Kingdom there's Hearts colors, colors. yeah, yeah some, man. some pictures King, move and you Kingdom press buttons Hearts to with Tank Man, you get the game we're working on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. It's like okay, so it's kind of like. Will you say it's like Second Life. It is Second Life. They just modded it. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's not. Called third I'd say life. it's not. It's not like Castle Crashers, really. But it's if a, you like Castle Crashers, I think if you like the multiplayer aspect of Castle Crashers, there's like some aspects. Friends, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. genre would you put it's it in? Would you, like would you say beat em up? There's some aspects of the game where you could just, it's, you know, you can come with your friends and you could just. There's like kind of like this overhead style thing in the game where if you if you want, you don't necessarily have to sit there and go through levels. You can just go around. Let's just say our world, our world shit. map is pretty oh, in depth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty it's cool. Pretty I won't it. say anything about it. Yeah, there's like, deliberately there's like not a, talking like about it. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm pretty sure none of you know who I am. I hope maybe now you do. But it was a pleasure guys, to meet all check you. Check out uh, his madness game. But yeah. you're not single, so girls, leave Yeah, so, off the so ladies, hands yeah, leave off the room. merchandise. <laughs> Slain, if you want to plug your yeah, game. Plug, plug, Hands plug. off the virtual digital if merchandise. You want to plug plug whatever you want. Uh, okay, so I'm working on a game with uh, Crinkles from Newgrounds called uh, Madness Project Nexus 2. Oh. It is a 3D PC and Mac title. I'm going to try to release this on Steam at some point. We're getting pretty close to having an alpha that we're going to have for people to play. We're working on it, and go to projectnexus2.com and get some links to, to see what the what the F we're up to. You ever consider just calling it Madness? It's still a working title. <laughs> it's still just right, a working sorry, title. To... For the for the for the uh, Flash game, I wanted to separate it from the series and also from Interactive. Because it's so different. Thing. It seems like it's so. Call it I could just, we could just call it Project Nexus call or just Swinkles. Madness. You know, I I have considered. You should this. just call it Madness. Call it Swinkles. Mad madness would be cool. I thought about it. I, I feel like swank, Swinkles. Swinkles. Dot com. Call it Swinkles. <laughs> you know what I want? I, I, for every sleepy cabin, what if you do like uh, do you have like an outro plug for your website like sleepycabin.com or something like that that well, you do sometimes uh, from now on I want you instead of .com be like sleepycabin. Ah! <laughs> do like a bird sound <laughs> yeah <laughs> sleepycabin. <laughs> or like a creaking door like that's your thing but it doesn't really help people find your website <laughs> I really want this. I want this to be a thing. Uh, Tom, do you want to plug anything? Griefing yeah. never. Uh, Newgrounds.com, home yeah, of Newgrounds the original internet. Yeah, guys, check out Newgrounds.com. Newgrounds. <laughs>